Well, I take pleasure to once again welcome you to lecture number two in our media ethics. Here, we focus on covering the philosophical foundation of ethics. I'll straight away go to the introduction. Principles and imperatives as the philosophical foundation of global journalism ethics. The central claim is that the globalization of news media requires a radical rethinking of the principle and standard of journalism ethics through the adoption of a cosmopolitan attitude. The article may explain how and why ethics should construct a global uh, journalism ethics using a constructionist approach. It then formulates claims or principles, the claims of credibility, justifiable consequence and humanity. The claims of humanity is developed further by formulation of the imperatives to act as global agents, to serve world citizens and to enhance nanny uh procure understanding well now we start taking the option of extensively looking at the philosophies we will try three of them and i'll start with the absolutist philosophy the term absolute denotes unconditional and or independence in the strongest sense it can include or overlap with the meaning implying by other concepts such as infinite, totality, and perfection. In Christian theology, for example, the absolute is conceived as being synonymous with uh, the person attribute of God. And it is characterized as a symbolic nature of God, such as his love, his truth, the wisdom, the existence, the knowledge, the power, and others. Absolute love, for example, denotes an unconditional love as opposed to that which is conditional or limited love. Likewise, the absolute can also be understood as the ultimate being or characteristic of it in other religious uh, traditions. The term absolutism may refer to philosophical stance which promotes notion of absolute truth involving quotations that in particular realms of thought all statements in the domain are either absolutely true or absolutely false. In ethical philosophy such can include forms of non moral absolutism assertion that there are absolute standards against which moral questions can be uh, judged and that certain actions are either good or bad regardless of the context of the act or graded absolutism. The view of the moral absolute like do not kill can be greater or lesser than another moral absolute which says do not lie. Absolutism is the ethical belief that there are absolute standards against which moral questions can be judged and that certain actions are right or wrong regardless of the, uh, the context of the act. Thus, actions are inherently moral regardless of the, of the beliefs and goals of the individual, society or culture that engages in the action. It holds that morals are inherent laws of the universe, nature of humanity, and the will of God, or some other fundamental sources. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato and Aristotle believe in a kind of absolutism or universalism opposing the moral relative, relativism and sophist Immanuel Kant was uh, a prominent promoter of moral absolutism and his uh, formulation of uh, deontological theory of the category of imperative was essentially absolutist in nature moral absolutism has been favored historically largely because it makes the creation of laws and upholds the judicial systems much simpler and manifested lies 
in an outdated concept such as divine rights of the king. Many religions have no morally absolutist oppositions and regard their systems of morality as having been set by a deity and therefore absolute, perfect and unchangeable. Many Christians regard uh, uh, Christian theology as a teaching a hierarchy of moral absolutes known as graded absolutism wherein the case of conflict between two absolutes the duty to obey the higher one which is God exempt one from the duty of the lower ones fell humans or still lower ones which is property divine command theory is a absolute metaphor ethical theory that an act is uh, obligatory if and only if it is commanded by God. William of uh, Ockham urges that if God had commanded murder, then murder would indeed have been a moral obligation for every person in a society. Sometimes moral absolutism can mean the more extreme position that actions are moral or immoral even regardless of the circumstance in which they occur, i.e. lying is always immoral and even if it promotes someone's other good such as save life. In this form, it can be contrasted with consequentialism in which moral rights action is one that produces a good consequence or outcome regardless of the intention. Just in case you joined us late, uh, we are still moving on with uh, the philosophical foundations of ethics and uh, we are still discussing the absolutism uh, theory of philosophy. Uh, here, I will now take you through the criticisms of moral absolutism. A primary criticism of moral absolutism regard, regards how we come to know what the absolute morals are. For morals to be truly absolute, they would have to have a universal and questionable source, interpretation and authority, which critics claim it is always impossible and remain an impossibility. Another uh, of the obvious criticism is the sheer diversity of moral obligation which exists between society and even within society in the world today, which suggests that there cannot be a single true morality. A questionalist would urge that it is not the right for moral absolutism to be unprepared to kill one man in order to prevent the death of many others, although this would be rather extreme and dogmatic example of moral absolutism. Well, uh, from the absolutist uh, uh, philosophy, we move now to the second philosophy, which is situation of philosophy. Situation of philosophy takes into account the particular context of an act when evaluating in ethical rather than uh, judging it according to absolute moral standard. With the intent to have a fair basis for judgment or action, one looks to personal ideals of what is appropriate to guide them rather than unchanging universal code of conduct such as biblical laws and divine command theory by Kantian archaeological uh, imperatives. Fletcher, who became prominent associated with the approach in the English-speaking world due to his book Situation Ethics, states that all laws and, uh, ru and rules and principles and ideals and norms are only contingent only valid if they happen to serve love in particular situations and thus may be provoked or broken or ignored if another cause of action would achieve a more loving outcome. Fletcher has sometimes been identified as the founder of situational ethics and he himself refers his readers to the active debate over the, over the theme that 
proceeded his own work. I want to say thank you for staying hooked uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, this is lecture two where our focus is on the philosophical foundations of ethics as we examine uh, media ethics as we proceed. Thank you very much. I'll now move straight to uh, philosophy number three, which is the antinomianism philosophy. Antinomianism comes from the Greek meaning lawless. In Christian theology, it is pejorative term for teaching that Christianity or Christians are under no obligation to obey the law of ethics or morality. Few, if any, would explicitly call themselves antinomian. Hence, it is usually charged level by one group against the opposing group. Antinomianism may be viewed as the polar opposition of legalism and the notion of obedience to the code of religious law is necessary for salvation. The sense both antinomianism and legalism are considered errant themselves or errant extremes. Anomianism is uh, any view which rejects law or legalism and is against moral, religion or social norms or is at least considered to do so. In Christianity, an antinomian is one who takes the principle of salvation by faith and divine grace to the point of asserting that they are saved and bound not to follow moral laws contained in the Ten Commandments. The, distinct, the distinction between antinomian and other Christian views on the moral law is that the antinomian believes that obedience to the law is motivated by internal principles following from belief rather than from external compulsions. The topic of antinomianism is quite complex because it involves the interrelated issues of power, authority, law, and freedom. On the other hand, religious rules or laws have been set in motion for the purpose of helping humanity to learn to live in harmony with each other and our planet. This underlying purpose is exemplified in various legal codes found in the world's religion. On the other hand, religious codes have been, in many cases, become archaic and oppressive to certain groups involved, thus acting as catalyst for social change. Indeed, it is often the case that antinomianism movement has been at the forefront of uh, pushing for social change and betterment of humanity. Thus, the topic of antinomianism solicits different responses and reactions due to its ambivalent fruits. <clears throat> now, if you see me walking with me, allow us to look through how the antinomianism is described today. The basic uh, jargon of the law and legalism rests on three uses of the law, which is described here. One, essentially, the law first shows us our sin and points us to the gospel. Number two, however, for some, the law can be used uh, post-conversion to stress the need for obedience. Then number three, the problem is how to use the law in two seemingly contradictory ways, one contrary to our nature and the other seemingly as honey in our mouth. Reformed and Rutherian perspectives have different dif or differed on this answer almost from the beginning. In the inverse of this problem is found in the term antinomianism. This word can be equally confusing as it is a uh, catchfall for a variety of issues, not all of them similar. Here are the ways I've seen the world, uh, the word antinomianism is used today. Number one, antinomianism is described as being those who preach sex, drug, rock and roll, which is a neo-Corinthian living 
in Chamberlain and Wantons, as in old KJZ. In Fatik's video, he says nothing like this. Rather, he seems to teach a bad hermeneutic of relationships of the old and the new covenant. But he does seem to speak against the law in a way that preps the soil for antinomian seed. God broke the law because it was a stupid set of rules. This first use of antinomianism, then in those who wish to, to still live as uh, prodigals remain. Number two, others use antinomianism for those who seem as uh, Fatik does, to describe the law itself. It is the tri trivializing of the law in the context of the Old Testament, seeing the covenant established under Moses as arbitrarily and life lifeless. This set of beliefs end up lessening the grace on, of the cross as it jobbers on the above how Christ overthrew the entirety of the Old Testament instead of keeping the law for the sake of justice. The cross becomes a mere demonstration of love, not atonement. Pushed to the extreme, this teaching has caused some to teach as uh, and sentiments and modern form of Marcionism, the idea that the Old Testament is wrathful but the new testament is grace and number three a third op option equally confusing when you see the side by side is the positive use of the term antimanism we have all had the slogan if you preach grace well you will at times sound antinomianism the early the earliest person to say this was martin uh, lloyd jones in his work on the Romans. Here, the term is used brushingly as a way to shake awake to the radical nature of grace. The radical way Christ fulfilled the law, give or given two uses above, there is clearly a potential for confusion in the third case, as it sounds as if it were affirming the first two options we have this uh, now rested here thank you very much for following us on our youtube channel our focus mainly is have some basic values or our studies meant to build professional journalism my name is katam nedinan from the united media consultants and trainers and also a uh, media practitioner with Inaman Broadcasting Company Limited in Makere Rechkoni, Kampala. Catch you in our next episode in which we'll be discussing uh, some other issues including areas of media ethic ethics in our next video.